You let me tell you about the FBI, which has told the BBC that levels of child trafficking for sex across America have reached almost epidemic proportions. Last year, federal agents rescued more than 600 children from a life of exploitation, and law enforcement agencies in the United States say the numbers of children exploited for sex have been rising steadily since the 1990s. Our international correspondent, Ian Pannell, has been to Baltimore, and I should warn you that uh, there is some pretty harrowing testimony in his report. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I got involved in prostitution when I was 14, and I didn't get out until my 40s. I am Beth. Since about 15, I've been doing prostitution. When he actually found out how old I was, that didn't stop him from wanting to be with me. He wanted me even more. Breaking Free is a group helping women who've been trafficked for sex. They estimate that as many as 80% of those they reach were still children when they were first exploited. Although foreigners are trafficked into the U.S., it's mainly American children who are being sold for sex in their own country. Part of what we're going to be talking about today is what is prostitution? Most of the women we've spoken to said the younger they were, the more money they made. Even the group moderator at Breaking Free, Jenny Gaines, was trafficked as a child. I ran away from home and I went looking for love and attention and the first guy that came around had lots of personality, he had great social skills, everybody liked him, I felt very important when I was with him and then he put together a, a lie, a scam, a trick, him and his friends. Uh, he came to me and he told me that these gang members were after him and they were going to kill him if he didn't come up with $400. And he said, I need your help. Well, how can I help? I'm only 14. Where am I going to get $400 from? And he says, well, I already got it all figured out. I've got some friends of mine upstairs, and they've already given me the money. I have enough to go pay these people. I just need you to go be with them, like you are with me. So when I went in the room, these men were not gentle with me. I was initiated. So I was really broken when I came out of that room and, and to have him so happy with me and it kind of made me forget about what just happened. Tens of thousands of children are thought to be exploited every year in America and trafficked into prostitution. Some of them end up out here on the streets, but many more appear online, out of sight and often out of mind. It's a significant problem that the FBI is targeting. But Joseph large, Campbell is the, the assistant States director of the Criminal Sex Investigation Sex Division Sex at the they're, FBI. They're targeting uh, middle school kids, high school kids uh, of all kinds, and they're looking for kids that are at risk. Is it something you can ever kind of understand what it is that's creating this demand? Well, the level of pedophilia is just unprecedented right now. It just seems to be almost at an epidemic level. Uh, why that is, I can't really say, but there's no doubt that the internet and the online world, uh, social media has really added to those individuals being able to communicate with each other and facilitate further the victimization of kids. I'm looking for girls that don't have a lot of tattoos, um, you know, baby fat, girls that are concealing their face. Corporal Chris Hyde of the Maryland Child Recovery Unit trawls through online sites searching for children who've been trafficked, and then he tries to rescue them. Lurid adverts with provocative photos promise sweet young 18-year-olds. Some of them are far younger than that. And when Chris Hyde suspects an advert, he poses as a client and calls up. Hey, is this Gabby? I was hoping I'd come see you today. She offered me a half hour for $100 and an hour for $150. So I told her I'd meet her for an hour for $150. So she's going to text me the address. She said she's on Route 1. It's a battle law enforcement is struggling to win. Often the odds of successfully reaching and rescuing vulnerable kids are slim. And in truth, not all police forces and local courts are trying to help. My addiction started when I was in between the age of 12. 14. Genesis 14. is now in her 30s. She never went to school. Instead, she was taken to help her parents shoplift to feed their heroin addiction. 
Her own battle with poverty, drugs and eventually exploitation started early. And around 15, 16 is when I met an older man that became my boyfriend. And that's when it started leading me down to um, selling myself. It's funny because people go about their daily life and they don't see it. However, it's right in their faces. So, but there must have been points at which, if people had been looking and willing, they could have helped you, right? Yeah, it's funny because um, in those stages of being incarcerated, I can remember asking the judge for help or trying to reach out and talk to the police. However, they didn't want to hear what I had to say. And instead, they would rather send me to prison or back to jail. And we came to where I couldn't trust the system anymore. So just to be clear, you tried to tell yeah. judges, police, that you were, had been trafficked, that you were being pimped out, that you were being held against your will yeah. and forced into prostitution. Yes. And they did nothing. They did nothing. A handful of good souls, the kindness of a few strangers and the work of some law enforcement agencies offer a little relief. The stories we've heard suggest they're only really scratching the surface of one of America's best kept and darkest secrets. And tonight, like every other night, hundreds more children are likely to be bought and sold for sex again.